Welcome to the cell division and DNA replication. On this tutorial, I will go over the two different types of cell division and how DNA replicates. We have to start from the very beginning. We all started as a cell smaller than a period at the end of a sentence. And now, look at you. How did you get from there to here? Well, getting from an egg to a baby to a teenager and to an adult takes many, many cell divisions. Besides growth and development in multi-celled organisms, cells also divide for repair and replacement of old and dying cells. In one cell organisms such as bacteria or amoebas, this is the way that they reproduce asexually, meaning they only need a parent to reproduce. This is also called binary fission and it produces clones identical to the parent cell. All of your body cells contain the same number of chromosomes. If this wasn't so, the cell will not be able to function properly. Body cells are also known as somatic cells. And in humans, somatic cells have 46 chromosomes. Pretty much all of your cells go through the cell cycle. The cell cycle can be divided into two stages. Interphase, which includes G1, S phase, and G2, and M phase. M phase includes mitosis and cytokinesis. Remember, the S phase is where DNA gets doubled or replicated. Certain cells, such as eye cells, heart cells, and neurons, enter a special phase called G0. These cells will no longer be able to divide or be replaced once they are destroyed. Let's take a look at the structure of a chromosome. When a chromosome has been replicated, both sides, also known as sister chromatids, are held together at the centromere. Chromosomes are made of coiled DNA molecules. They are found inside the nucleus of a cell. During S phase, the cell prepares to double or replicate its DNA. This is done by unzipping the DNA molecule and using each of the sites as a template. The two new strands of DNA are a combination of the old and the new complementary strand. This is also referred as the semi-conservative replication. In order to create a complementary strand, DNA follows a specific base pairing rule, where Adenine is paired up with thiamine, and cytosine is paired up with guanine. Watson and Crick are the scientists credited for finding out the base pairing rule and also the structure of DNA. Enzymes also have a big role in the making of DNA. For example, DNA polymerase adds the nucleotides, helicase will unwind the DNA molecule, and primase will join the little sections of DNA that has been created. Mitosis can only start once the DNA has been replicated and proofread for errors during one of its many checkpoints. Some of the cell regulators include cycling, which is a protein that controls cell division, and p53. p53 is a gene that repairs, stops cell division, or kills a cell when a defect cannot be repaired. The stages of mitosis include prophase, where the nuclear envelope starts disappearing, the DNA condenses into chromosomes, and this is the first stage where we can see the X-shaped chromosomes, metaphase, where chromosomes align on the equator, anaphase, where the chromosomes or the sister chromatids are separated, and telophase, where the nuclear envelope reforms and the chromosomes unwind or uncoil back into its chromatin form. Cytokinesis is what follows mitosis. This is the division of the rest of the cell, including the cytoplasm and the organelles. In animal cells, we see a cleavage furrow appearing, and in plant cells, we see a cell plate, which will later become the cell wall of the two new cells. This is a quick diagram that shows the difference between all of the stages in a cell cycle. Remember, mitosis produces two new daughter cells. Both of them are copies of the, the original cells. They have the same DNA, which pretty much makes them clones of each other. 
Advantages of mitosis include the rapid production of offsprings in unicellular organisms such as amoebas and bacteria. In certain animals, we see replacement of lost body parts. We call this regeneration. We also get uh, desirable characteristics passed on onto the next generation. Mitosis results once again in two genetically identical cells. Let's take a quick look at meiosis now. Meiosis is a type of cell division that produces sex cells. We also call them gametes. Gametes have a haploid number, meaning that they only have half of the chromosomes that you would find in a normal body cell. In humans, sex cells have 23 chromosomes. A human body cell would contain 46 chromosomes. Meiosis has two divisions. We call the first division meiosis 1 and the second meiosis 2. This is a quick diagram that shows all of the stages of meiosis. We have eight in total. Prophase one is where crossing over occurs. This increases genetic variation. This is very important for species. This gives them a higher likelihood of uh, surviving, growing, and reproducing. Metaphase one is where homologous chromosomes pair up and meet at the middle of the cell. They align randomly contributing once again to genetic variation. During anaphase 1, we have homologous chromosomes being separated. During telophase 1 and cytokinesis, the cell splits into two. Prophase 2 is a short phase where the nuclear envelope breaks apart. It is followed by metaphase 2 where chromosomes align and anaphase 2 where sister chromatids separate. Telophase 2 and cytokinesis 2 will uh, result in two cells splitting up into four haploid cells with half the genetic material from the original cell. Remember, meiosis begins with a diploid number of chromosomes and ends up with four haploid cells containing half of the chromosomal number. For example, in human cells, we started with 46 and we end up with 23 chromosomes in each sperm and also in each ovum. So why is meiosis so important? Well, the gametes must have only half the necessary chromosomes. When the two gametes unite, the resulting cell must have the exact chromosome numbers for that species. Unlike mitosis, meiosis will always result in four haploid cells with a different combination of chromosomes every time. This contributes to the genetic variation and it is an advantage of sexual reproduction. In humans, meiosis is called oogenesis in females where an ovum is produced in the ovaries and spermatogenesis in males where sperm is produced in the testes. Notice that in spermatogenesis we end up with four viable sperms. In oogenesis, only one out of the four cells will become the egg. The other three are called polar bodies. They are later discarded by the body. Homologous chromosomes are a pair of chromosomes where one has been inherited from the mother and the other one has been inherited by the father. During prophase one, homologous chromosomes trade sections of DNA causing a shuffling of genes. Crossing over leads to an increase in genetic variation and leads to diversity in the species. Now let's compare mitosis and meiosis. How many divisions are there in mitosis? There's only one. And in meiosis, there's two. How many cells are produced? We produce two in mitosis. Meiosis produces four. Are cells identical to the original parental cell? Mitosis, they are. Are beginning cells diploid or haploid? They are diploid for both. Are resultant cells diploid or haploid? They are diploid for mitosis, but they are haploid in meiosis. Contains same amount of chromosomes as the beginning cell, that's mitosis. Contains half the amount of chromosomes as the beginning cell, that's meiosis. Produces egg and sperm for sexual reproduction, meiosis. Produces body or somatic cells for repair and growth. That's mitosis. The malfunction of division leads to uncontrolled cell division in mitosis, leading to cancer. And in meiosis, 
we might see malformations in the developing embryo, uh, including things like uh, non-disjunction, where we see uh, abnormalities such as Down syndrome or other mutations in the embryo. Now, this is the end of the online tutorial. I hope you, I have answered all your questions. If not, just please make sure that you ask me during class. Thank you. Bye-bye.